Hello and welcome to the last course in the Microsoft BI toolset. This course is titled Microsoft SQL Server Reporting Services or abbreviated as SSRS. If you haven't watched the previous lectures, I strongly recommend you to watch the SQL Basic, SQL Advanced and the ETL or SSIS courses that comprise the complete BI suite of tools. All the links for these lectures are in the attachment alongside this lecture. There were a few feedback provided by my students in earlier lectures. Um, so I have used them and incorporated in this course. Some of them were people like the short course format. So hence I have kept this course very concise and up to the point, helping you to quickly learn and get started with SSRS. Secondly, people wanted the installation and setup instructions in a PDF so that they can follow along. And hence, I have provided them as attachments alongside the lectures. Next, folks also wanted some practice assignments and hence I have provided some PDF attachments as well. So, sit back and relax and I hope you enjoy this course. Good luck. Hello and welcome to yet another exciting course. In this course, we are going to learn something new. We are going to learn how to tell a simple story using data. So before we dive in, a little about me. My name is Rakesh. In my day job, I work in the field of data science and analytics. As far as my hobbies are concerned, I like hiking, teaching, playing Xbox, photography, traveling, etc. I would love to connect with each and every one of you taking in this course, so feel free to connect with me through LinkedIn or my website. In the previous few courses, we talked about introduction to databases, we discussed absolute basics, how to install databases, write your first query, and then deep dive into the basics of databases. Then we moved on to advanced database concepts. We discussed some advanced querying techniques and at the end of the course, you were able to write some complex queries and work on projects independently. Next, we learned data manipulation and loading or also called as extract, transform and load. We talked about some, some of the effective techniques to move data from one system to another and manipulate the data in between the transfer. We specifically used Microsoft SQL Server integration services. Now, let's discuss something exciting. Let's discuss some reporting techniques. Quite often, you must have faced a situation where you did an excellent job building your warehouses, but your management don't seem to use it effectively. I look at reporting as a way of telling a beautiful story. As an example, when your boss asks you, how is our sales in Europe? He isn't probably expecting a data dump or a query or a table output. What he is expecting is something like sales in this year was good. Except for two countries in Europe due to seasonality and our overall Y2T sales looks like it's pretty healthy, especially when we look at a monthly trend. So he wants some kind of a story. So essentially, in this course, we are going to learn how to use some of the tools to tell a great story about your data. There are various tools in the market, SSRS, Tableau, ClickView, Power BI, etc. We are going to look at SSRS in this course. I will definitely record some courses for few other tools as well in the near future. So, once our complete course is covered in this session and you are an expert in databases, moving data and telling a great story, what's next? I believe it's finding opportunities in your data, aka data science. We will cover that in a separate course. All right, so let's start from the absolute scratch. What is SSRS? There are a lot of tools out there that help you produce very nice reports. Excel, Tableau, ClickView, etc. 
We are going to learn about a tool called SQL Server Reporting Services or also called as SSRS. So let's first look at a Microsoft definition for SSRS. SQL Server Reporting Services is a solution that customers deploy on their own premises for creating, publishing and managing reports, then delivering them to the right users in different ways, whether it's viewing them in the web or mobile device or an email. In essence, it is a software to create and deliver reports. So, how do you get started with SSRS? If you are new to SSRS, do not worry at all. I haven't assumed any prior knowledge when creating this course. There are absolutely no prerequisites at all. I will show you how to download and install SQL Server reporting services and also install some sample databases to work with. We will then create some basic and advanced reports. I will walk you through some deployment techniques as well. So stay tuned. In this lecture, I'm going to walk you through how to install a SQL Server database, install SQL Server reporting services, and also install some sample databases to work with. In one of my previous course, that is Introduction to Databases and SQL Querying, I walked you through database engine installation and sample database installation. Many students recommended to upload a PDF with step-by-step -step instructions. Hence, this time I have created three documents that you can follow offline. It will take you through installation and configuration. And after following these three documents, you should be fully ready to start creating your first report. Let me give you a quick walkthrough and also note that if you find some of the links not working, please run a simple web search to find the new links. So the first document walks you through steps about how to download some of the evaluation editions and go ahead and install them. So once you actually install the database engine, then you can go ahead and configure your reporting services. So this is the installation of database engine and this is the configuration of reporting services. So just follow step by step. And once you fully complete that, you can go ahead and install some sample databases as well. Now we will be creating the, the next few lectures using some of these sample databases. So we will create reports which point to these databases so that if you want to follow along with me, you have some database to work with. All right. Hope you have all installed and tested your databases and reporting services. If so, let's go ahead and create something very simple. Let's use an inbuilt wizard and create a very simple report. This will give you an overall feel of how a report is developed and how a report looks like in SSRS. In the coming lectures, we will use more manual and traditional methods to develop the reports. And we'll also look at some of the tools and controls that SSRS provides. Okay, so I have opened Visual Studio. I will go ahead and click on new project. The next thing what I want to do over here is create a report server project wizard, right? And this is so that it just fires up the wizard. And I am going to call this as my first report and click OK, and it will open up a wizard for me. So once you click Next, the next thing what you need to do is give some name to a data source, right? So I'm going to call this as first data source, and then you can type in a connection string or click on Edit, and you can use this wizard. So if you remember, the instance that we created was called localhost, and the instance name was SQL 2016, and once you do that, you can go ahead and click on the database name. And if you have installed AdventureWorks database correctly, you should see that listed over here. Once you choose that, click on test connection and you see that the connection succeeded. All right, so we have actually configured our data source. So basically we are saying that whatever this report needs, whatever data it needs, 
it is actually in this particular connection string or in this particular database that this connection string points to. All right, wonderful. So let's go ahead and click next. And here you can actually go ahead and type the query, right? The query which should output the data into the report. And to keep things more simple, what I'm going to do is I am going to click on the query builder and then choose some tables. So this icon that I clicked will just add a few tables, whatever you choose, um, into this query designer. So to keep things simple, let me go ahead and choose a table. I will choose say sales territory and click add. So you see this actually went ahead and added a table. You can definitely add more tables over here, join them and do whatever you need. But let's just keep it very simple now. In the coming lectures, you will definitely know how to do a lot of these things. All right, I'm gonna close this. And the next thing I want to do is, I'm going to select a few columns that I need from the table to be displayed in the report. All right, I think we have enough columns. So you see that it starts generating this query and you could actually run this query if you hover over the exclamation mark, you will see run. And if you run that query, it's going to actually return a few rows. And it's precisely these rows that we are going to output to a report. All right, click OK. And then when you click Next, it's going to ask you a couple of more questions, whether you want a tabular, you want a matrix. Again, don't bother too much about these things, right? We will have separate lectures which just talks about tabular, which just talks about matrix reports and so on and so forth. Okay, let's go ahead and click Next. And once you do that, I am going to add a couple of fields to my displayed fields, to groups and details. So don't worry too much about these three sections. You will slowly come to know as and when you start developing the reports. Once you click next, there's a couple of questions on the overall table layout, whether you want a blocked approach or a stepped approach, whether you need subtotals, and then click next. And then, you know, it kind of summarizes all these things. So I am going to call this as first report. All right, so you see a quick summary and then you can preview the report and click finish and it will create a report for you. Okay, and this is the report that it created Observe that there is basically not, not much of formatting and stuff like that. We will go through separate lectures on that. But the interesting thing is definitely you can, you know, look at the report using various pages. So while we are here, I'd like to walk you through a couple of things. Um, a quick view on the left hand side, you see the toolbox. And these are some of the tools that we will be using to create a report. Uh, there is also a server explorer where we will see how to connect to different servers. On the right hand side is where you will see a couple of folders over here which stores your data sources, data sets and reports. So when we create our first manual report, you will see all this in action. But I just wanted you to know that these exist out there. Again, you can collapse or expand or you know pin or unpin any of these windows and that's pretty much it so congratulations you have created your very first report now you know somewhat about how the whole ssrs looks like and we will also look at how to deploy reports and stuff like that in the coming lectures thank you welcome back in this tutorial i'm going to show you how to create your first ssrs report without using any wizards I want you to pay special attention to this video as concepts will get added in the coming videos. The goal of this video is twofold. Number one, I want to show you how to create an SSRS report. And number two, I want you to get acquainted with the Visual Studio tools. So let's jump to Visual Studio. All right, 
So I have Visual Studio open. So first what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and create a new project. So let me go ahead and choose report server project and I'll call this as first non wizard project, right? So essentially what I'm trying to do over here is I'm going to create a simple SSRS report without using any wizards, right? So in this way, you will see some of the simple tools and controls that you can use, and then you can leverage and, and you know, kind of add upon that as you go in, in the further lectures. All right, so once this loads up, if you go to toolbox, this is where all your controls will start appearing as you start building the reports. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Solution Explorer and let me just make some space. So you see there are three folders over here which we are going to add something to it. So first thing is I'm going to right click on reports and say add a new item. And it's going to give me a couple of options. What I'm going to do over here is I am going to create a non wizard report. And I'm going to select report and click on add. So as soon as I do that, you see a number of things happen, right? So first of all, in the center, you see some working space. This is where we will start creating our reports. On the side, you see a couple of folders being created. And if you go to the toolbox, you see some tools appearing, right? So we will make use of all these things. So first, what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and add a data source. Now, a data source is nothing but um, basically a connection string from where we need to grab the data. And then finally, um, you know, we'll use that data to display in the report in a particular format. So I'll call this as my data source and I'll go ahead and configure a data source. So our SQL instance was SQL 2016 and I'm going to use SQL authentication. All right. So once that is done, I'm going to go ahead and choose Adventure Works 2016. Now, in, in the previous lectures, you might have seen 2014. I just got a new um, uh, backup file as I was creating this video. Uh, it looked like it's, it's just the same database, but I uh, know it's a newer version, so I'm just using that. If you run a simple Google search, you will also get the 2016 Adventure Works database. So I'll go ahead and choose that, test the connection, and if everything looks good, next, what I'm going to do is I am going to create a data set. Now, a data set is nothing but basically a query. Think of it as a query, right? And uh, it'll become more clear as we go developing this report, but it's just a set of query which queries against the data source that you created and then, you know, spits out uh, some rows of data. So let me call this as my um, sales territory data set, something like this. And you can, of course, create a shared data set so that you can use among multiple reports or you can embed the data set. So don't worry too much about it, just go along with me. I'm going to choose the data source that I just created, which is pointing to the AdventureWorks database, and I am going to use the query designer. Um, all right, so let me go ahead and just configure a few things, our database connection string. Once this is done. Okay, so this is kind of a graphical query designer. You can very well type in the query as well, but I'm going to show you something very simple here so that you get used to some of the available tools when you create the report. So if you click on the plus sign, it throws a bunch of tables, right, that you can add. And as and when you add these tables, when you double click, it'll start appearing behind the scenes. Now you can definitely add multiple tables and join them, 
but for the simplicity of this lecture I'm going to just use one table all right and then from that table I need a couple of columns and you see as and when I start typing these or selecting these columns it starts generating a query and you can actually click on this little exclamation mark and run that query as well and it'll show you the sample data now this is precisely the data that we want to display in the report right so you have everything ready now click OK and now is where you start designing the report so if you go to the toolbox and let's try something simple let's actually um, all right let's do this let's drag a text box and then let's say my first report all right and then I'm going to make this bold I'm going to like increase the font I'm going to center align this and maybe make this as Calibri all right and the next control what I'm going to use is a table and let me just make a little bit more bigger all right and if I go to my report data there are a couple of columns here right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop a couple of columns name country region code um, group and sales YTD right some simple stuff I don't need this so I'm going to delete the columns all right and then I can again play around with the font a little bit I can make this bold underline and then maybe um, let me try something else font let me change this ah, that doesn't look good let me try something else all right um, all right so let me go ahead and maybe do something like this and so you get the get the picture right so it's it's like you know editing your text again for the simplicity um, sake I'm just doing all this using the controls you can definitely write expressions change colors dynamically depending upon values and and we'll walk through some of the examples as well so we have everything wired up now now if you click on the preview tab it will actually create that particular report for you ah I didn't save the credentials that's why it's asking me once I enter it see you have your first report so this is how you would manually create a report now this is like a very high level very simple view of how, how you would create a report right naturally we'll keep adding more and more concepts like how do you filter this report right if you want only US country region code or if you want the user to enter a country region code and just display the value how do you do it how do you aggregate it how do you maybe show sales YTD in green color if it's above 7 million and if it's below 5 million you show it in red color there's so much of things you can do right so SSRS is a very very highly flexible tool it's 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 much simpler to build on very simple stuff and then keep adding to it rather than throwing everything in one report so we'll walk through each and every stage so hopefully you hopefully you got acquainted to some of the tools and hopefully you can now start playing around with this tool a little bit now in the next lecture I'm going to show you how to edit this report and add some more features so see you in the next lecture all right so in this lecture what I'm going to show you is I'm going to take the previous report that we just created and do some enhancements so for example if basically I run this report it will just show me the whole table and we discussed the possibility of adding a parameter right suppose you want the user to type in the country region code and filter the whole report just based on country region code how do you do it so the way that you do it is basically you add a where clause here right and let me show you so where country region code you say is equal to when you say add the rate and some parameter name 
that just means that the user needs to supply that value or that value needs to come from somewhere, right? So now closely observe this parameters folder as I click OK. So when I click OK, it automatically created a parameter. So this is the parameter that we just created, the country region code. And let's go ahead and look at some of the properties. If I double click on it, it kind of gives me a couple of settings that I can do. I can change the data type or I can define some available values and we'll look into this in just a bit. Um, if the user doesn't provide a value, what are the default values we can pass in? And some other refresh related uh, settings. So we're going to leave all the default settings and just run this report. So when I run this report, it asks for country region code. If I type in US, it basically just gives me US specific data. Or let's say if I type in Canada, it'll give me Canada specific data. So this is like a way in which you can actually pass parameters and filter your report. Now, let's assume that you really don't want the user to type in the parameter, right? You may, the user may not know, he might type in USA or CA and ADA, something like that, right? So you want to have these values supplied through a dropdown. Now, the way you can do that is basically you create a data set. So let me go ahead and just copy this query. And I'll create a new data set and I'll call this as country region code data set. And I'll use the same connection string and just select the distinct country region code. And that's pretty much it. No parameters, nothing. So what this will do is it will just return the distinct country region code. So if I click on the exclamation, these are the sample values it will return. Now we have to somehow wire these values to the parameter, right? So I'll go ahead and click OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that I'm going to double click on this parameter and I'm going to say the available value should come from a query and the query is basically country region code data set, right? The value should be your column name and label is nothing but what is passed as a parameter to the other query. So we just have one column here. So we're going to select that and click on OK. And now let's see what happens. So as soon as you click preview, you see that it's no longer a drop. Uh, it's no longer a text box. Excuse me. It's actually a drop down and the values are actually fed from the query that we just created. So as soon as you select say US, it will be passed on to the other query and the report is now filtered just for US country region codes, right? Similarly, Canada. Now, this is how you can kind of play with parameters. Now, naturally, I've shown you a simple example. You can have multiple data sets. Um, you know, you can actually have um, it show as CA, but pass the value as Canada. That's where your label values and all that come into play. So as and when you start developing more complex reports, you will actually, um, you know, really, really um, see how powerful SSRS is and how you can actually start passing such dynamic parameters in various forms to filter your report. Thank you. Hello and welcome back. So in the previous lecture, we, we saw a little bit about how to use parameters in your reports. And we looked at how to pre-configure some values and then pass it on to your report. But most of the times what we saw was that we just used one parameter. So in this lecture, let's try a couple of more things. So let's go ahead and just uh, run the same thing. So what we did was that we had a data source and we are passing a parameter in this particular data set. And that is what is basically driving the whole report. Right. So let's um, let's basically do one thing. Let's actually create two parameters instead of one. So I'm just going to write and territory ID equal to territory ID. So once I click OK in our parameters pane, you should see two of them. Right. Um, let's go ahead and, and run this.
So you, you, you see that one of the parameters is actually pre-filled and that's because in the previous lecture we actually saw how to uh, away, how to gain values and how to insert these values into uh, a particular drop down uh, when the report actually loads so after i choose say canada i need to supply a territory id as well now i don't remember what territory ids are belonging to canada but i'll just try territory id 3 all right so it doesn't have any values so let's do this let's quickly um run this i'm going to cheat a little bit let's take this out and let's run this all right so us has territory id 1234 and all right so this looks good so if we try to run this report and select us and say territory id 2 it should actually filter oops us territory id 2 it should filter for that particular row now one of the things that i wanted to show you over here is definitely how to use multiple parameters you can keep adding more and more parameters over here um, but what i would like to have is once i choose us um, territory id should also be pre-populated right with only the values that belong to us so it's kind of a cascading effect right so if i choose canada only the territory ids that belong to canada should be shown over here and the way you can do that is actually similar to how we did country region code right so what we're going to do over here is i'm going to create a new data set and i'm going to call this as um, param uh, territory id by the way, this is a naming convention, um, you know, I, I generally like, you know, to prefix with the word param so that you actually know what all data sets are actually driving the parameters. So it, 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 it becomes really very easy when you have like 10 to 15 parameters in a report and it becomes really easy to see uh, which of those data sets you need to debug in case there are issues. So I'll go ahead and just use one of the data sets that I created. And what I'm going to do over here is in a similar fashion, I'm going to write a query and I use the sales territory. So I'm going to use the same uh, table and I'm going to just get the territory ID um, where, uh, let's see. Yeah. So where country region code equal to at the rate country region code so basically what we are saying is to get the sales territory you need to pass in some parameter and that happens to be country region code so let me click ok and what this is going to do is it is going to expect the value of country region code from this parameter and this parameter expects value from the data set that we created so it's kind of a cascading effect so let me show you how that works so you see that the first parameter that will get fired over here when i run the report is the country region code and it will actually derive values from this query because we have wired up that data set to that particular parameter as soon as i select something Next, what will happen is territory ID will derive values from this data set. And this data set has a where clause, which is dependent on the previous filter, right? So it will basically show you only that, only those values. So if I double click territory ID and say available values, I'm going to say that the available values should come through the territory ID data set that we created. And that's it. One more modification that we need to do over here is, um, actually we did this. So, uh, you know, once we fill in both the, uh, once we choose both the values from those parameters, those values should be passed on to this particular query. And that's what will get displayed in the report. So I think we have set everything over here. Now, if I click preview, um, 
the value refers to non-existing country region code okay so one thing that we have to be careful is this is case sensitive so i am going to quickly make this change country region code and then hopefully we should be fine all right so if i click preview that worked so let me go ahead and select us and then it actually just populates the values that belong to us so if i select say canada this should actually show only values belonging to canada and when i click view report it should only show that particular row right so this is how you can actually create cascading parameters so all we have done is we have just created multiple data sets where the third data set is dependent on the second one second one is dependent on the first one and so on and so forth right so you can you can actually create a more user friendly report so that uh, you don't have to always expose um, you know a text box where you keep the user guessing what values to enter and sometimes rubbish values comes through so this will actually clean up all those things and provide a more streamlined experience so that's about parameters highly customizable in the next lecture what we are going to see is we're going to take the same report and we are going to play with some expressions right so expressions are statements which allow you to custom customize pretty much anything so we'll have a look at that in the next lecture thank you all right so in the previous lecture we looked at how to create a you know report using the non wizard technique we added a few parameters then we actually enhance those parameters by creating multiple parameters cascading effect and so on and so forth in this particular lecture what we are going to do is we are going to actually play a little bit with expressions and i'm going to show you how to customize almost anything in this particular report so let's go ahead and um, do something so i am going to also pull in the territory id and um you, so expressions are nothing but some statements that you would write um in order to customize something so when i say something um you know it could be font it could be color it could be calculations and so on and so forth right so let me show you an example so this is the territory id that is highlighted now assume that this is some sort of a key performance indicator right you want to highlight rows that have you know that are, that have some values above a thresh, certain threshold so if you right click on this oops uh, there is something called as expression and if you click on expression it kind of gives you this window where you can write some code right and this is where you write the expressions and so on and so forth now in this particular instance what we want to do is we want to go ahead and change some coloring right so what we could do is highlight territory id press f4 it will open up the properties pane and in the properties pane there should be a font color right so there is black is the default color and if i click on this it is going to give me um, an option to write some expressions so this will open up the expression editor and what i could do is this there's a bunch of things you can do right so there is built in fields uh, you can use parameters you can use some functions and so on and so forth so let me show you a couple of things so that you know what are the different possibilities um, that expressions have so first thing what i'm going to show you is um, you know as i said um, you know let's let's do something like this right if the territory id is greater than 5 let's show it in red and if it's less than 5 let's show it in say green right so i'm going to choose the iif function and it's it's kind of like an if clause where you say if this condition happens do this and if it doesn't happen do the other thing right so let me show you so if i double click on this it kind of gives me a general syntax and what i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to say that if my territory id is less than or equal to 5 then i want it to be shown as green right and and please remember we are we, are, we have clicked the expression for the font color so whatever we are writing will apply to the font color only and i'll show you how to apply uh, for other things as well or else just um, say you know you need it red 
All right, so let's see if this works. And naturally it's going to ask me two parameters. So I'm going to choose US and let's see three. So it's green, right? So let's choose something which is above five, this one. So this one should come as red. So you see that the expressions get applied, um, you know, uh, depending upon every row. Um, and then you can use it however you want. All right, so let me show you one more thing. Uh, let's go ahead and say that, um, all right, let me go ahead and add a column and say um, sales YTD with bonus, something like this, right? And I'm gonna write a simple expression here. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna write an expression which says, uh, let's see, program flow, if my sales YTD Actually, let's keep it more simple. Let's say sales YTD plus um, 100,000 or 10,000. So you see it shows an expression. That means at runtime, it's going to take whatever value is for that row's um, sales YTD and it's going to add 10,000 to it. So let's take a quick example. Let's say US territory ID two, and you see that, um, well, it hasn't added this. So 24, oh yeah, it has actually added $10,000 to this. So this is a, another way of writing an expression, right? So we saw two scenarios and both are related to different cells in the same row. One was we played around with font, other was we played around with um, the actual values, right? And if you actually think about it, you can actually write expression for almost anything, right? Um, so if it's a background color, there is an expression you can write, right? Um, you can say that if the current time is whatever, 10 a.m. to 12 a.m., the background color should be green. And if it's something outside of that range, it should be red, something like that. Um, speaking of which, actually, let's, let's, let's play around with that. So what I'm going to do is I am going to, um, drag and drop a text box and let me just resize this a little bit and i'm going to write an expression and i'll say that say the time of execution of report equal to and let's see if there is a function now right and basically it's just going to um, you know, show the current time. There's a ton of stuff here as well. And there's an execution time as well. So also we can check that out. Um, all right, let's, let's, let's just keep it as it is for now. And, uh, time is not, oh yeah, sorry. So, I need to, since this is a string, I need to enclose it in double inverted commas and hopefully they should run. Okay, so let me go ahead and choose US four and it shows the current time, All right? So there are tons of things you can do. So let's see what else we can do, right? Um, all right, let me actually show you a few more things. So I'll go ahead and drag and drop a text box. And oops, what happened? All right, go ahead and resize this a little bit. And I'm going to right click and then write an expression. And what I'm going to do here is I am going to, so you see, you can actually manipulate strings, you can manipulate values, you can you can really, really write highly flexible code. And whatever you see on the right hand side, um, you know, pretty much everything you can actually customize it using an expression. So now you're actually getting into the power of SSRS, where you can have this very highly customized reports because, you know, you can write an expression for almost anything. 
and um, I'll also show you how to write some C sharp code, or at least I'll put in some documentation. Um, you know, in the in the past, I've had an instance where I needed to grab some data from a web service and then show it into a table. And um, the easiest way I could do is basically just write um, you know three four lines of C sharp code to connect to the web service, uh, put it in an object, and then just display it. So you know, it 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 pretty much gives you that amount of flexibility that you might not always find in many of those tools so many of the tools might be easy to use and you know more drag and drop friendly but this is what i love about ssrs where it gives you this tremendous facility to keep adjusting and customizing on need basis so let's see what all things are available so um date and time let's see what is built in field so we have a language all right so let's let's just try a few things right so say language um equal to and then we'll just see what comes up in language and then we'll say uh, page number equal to and then let's see what comes up in page number and and so on and so forth right and let's just make this a little bit bigger and then just to make sure it doesn't overlap i'm just shifting it down okay all right so let's go ahead and click preview um oh yeah sorry we use an expression which can only be used in a page header so that's good so i can show you how to add a page header and page footer as well so let me copy this expression and and kind of delete this text box and if you right click on the you know the body of the report there is something called insert and i'm going to just insert a page header and i'm going to right click and then say um, header properties so header properties is where you can kind of um, you know define your color your images um, and and stuff like that so what we are going to do here is we're going to add a text box and in the text box we are going to write an expression and we're going to just paste the expression that we copied and let's resize this a little bit and click on preview all right so i'm going to choose us and i'm going to choose a territory id to and once it executes, um, we we basically have not enabled pagination here. That's why it's blank. But you see the language is ENUS. Your browser language is um, United States English. We saw this particular expression kick in. We saw this particular expression kick in where it kind of embedded the time. We saw an expression which added $10,000 to a sales uh, year to date. So plenty of things you can do using expressions. I think I've shown you most of the um you know things that comprises the whole framework and definitely you can you can start playing around this a little bit more and come up with more innovative ways to make your report more customizable thank you hello everyone in this lecture we are going to look at various techniques to display data ssrs provides us some basic tools like tables matrices charts graphs etc to represent the data so we are going to look at some of these techniques. In the previous lecture, we saw how to create a simple SSRS report. The example which I showed you is called as a tabular report. In reporting services, tables, matrices, and lists are data regions that display paginated report data in cells that are organized into rows and columns. The cells typically contain text data such as dates, text, numbers, but they can also contain some charts and report items and images and so on and so forth. So collectively, tables and matrices and lists are frequently referred to as tablex data regions. So we saw how to display data. These were numbers and text data. We can also display some graphs and other visual controls as well. So I am going to show you some few examples in a few minutes. So I got this very interesting image from the Microsoft website, which kind of gives you a good distinction between a table 
and a matrix report and a list. And we'll, we'll look through some examples as well. We use a table to display detailed data, organize the data into rows, groups, or both. The table template contains three columns um, with a table header row and a details row for the data. And you will find this control in the tools section in SSRS. We'll try to walk through an example as well. The next one is a matrix report. We use a matrix report to display aggregated data, you know, in the form of summaries grouped into rows and columns. And it's kind of similar to our pivot tables in Excel or, you know, the cross tabs that we refer. The number of rows and number of columns for groups is determined by the number of unique values in each row and column groups. We'll also see some tricks and techniques for, you know, how to create a sort of a drill down effect and how to toggle visibility between certain rows, how to expand collapse certain groupings of data and so on and so forth. So just bear with me for a minute more and then we'll jump into some more examples. The last one is a list. Now we use a list as kind of a free form layout, right? So you're not limited to any grid layout, but you can kind of place your fields freely. So imagine like, you know, you want to display some sort of a business card style kind of a report, right? One for each employee or, or something like a scorecard, which is customized for each employee. Um, you know, you have some stats, you have some text, you have some charts and stuff like that. This is a perfect example where you would kind of use a list. So you can use a list to design a form for displaying many data sets, right? Uh, many data set fields, or you can use it as a container to display multiple data regions and so on and so forth. So for example, you can define a group for a list, then add a table, a chart, an image, and display values in the table and also in a graphical format for each group value. So don't get confused too much. We will look through a simple example um, and which uh, after which you can use the same example and you know you know have your imagination run wild and actually create highly customizable lists um, you know which is as per your requirements for your particular project. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a simple report over here and I'm going to call it as table uh, matrices and lists and let's see what options are available. So first and foremost as I do with any report, the first thing I need to do is I have to go ahead and create a item and I'll go and say add item and I'm going to create a report, right? So this is going to be TML report. And once I do that, the next thing I need to do is I'm going to go and grab some data. So I'm going to add a data source and we'll use our same data source that we have been using so far and you know drag and drop the sales territory so that we are more familiar with that since we have walked through that example a few times. So I connect it to my data source and next what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a data set and I'm going to use the data set data source that I just created and I'm going to just add a table to it. <clears throat> So we've been dealing with sales territory. So let's just use that. And then, you know, if you want to look at the data, oops, sorry, uh, I need to select a few columns. And if you want to look at the data, this is how it looks like, right? All right. So to keep this simple, what I'm going to do is first, I'm going to show you how to create a table, right? So this is what we have been seeing so far. So there is a header and there is some data in it, right? And the simplest way to create is basically, you know, you just drag and drop your columns and that's kind of pretty much it right and then again all these as, as i had uh, mentioned in my previous lectures you can actually uh, write a lot of expressions to go ahead and customize this but this is how a typical table would look like just like an excel table right you just you know it's, it's just a combination of rows and columns this is how a table would look like now let's go ahead and you know look at something a little bit different so let me go ahead and delete this. And what I'm going to do now, and I'm going to use a matrix, right? And if you see a matrix, you basically see it's a little bit different. There is rows, there's columns, and there's going to be data in it, right? So imagine this like a, like a pivot table, right? The pivot tables that you use in Excel, the way that you actually 
um, use that is you have some rows and columns and, and, and the aggregation or the summation or whatever types of aggregation you want to use is basically the intersection between the rows and columns. And that's precisely the idea that we are using in a matrix report as well. So let me go ahead and uh, maybe, let's say, um, let's go ahead and use country region code. Let's go ahead and use a group. And for data, let's go ahead and use the sales YTD. Right. And, um, and let me go ahead and run this. So this is like a typical tabular report that we just saw. But one of the things you can note over here is see how this gets grouped. So you have the first hierarchy from country region code, and then you have the groups and so on and so forth. So um, let me show you something interesting. Let me actually go ahead and drag and drop this group as columns, and I'm just going to get rid of this. And let's see how this displays. So this is basically, you see that there is, um, you know, there is an intersection between columns and rows, and, and the intersection is, um, you know, your aggregated data. So this is kind of like a pivot table. And I'll go ahead and just um, delete this so that we have some good column and row information as well. Something cool. Uh, yeah, I want to show you one more thing. So let me go ahead and just click on preview. Um, and let me do something. All right, so let me go ahead and actually delete this so that you know we can keep the example a little bit simpler. Now you see that there is in the names column there are many names, right? And and some of them are repeated. And whenever they are repeated, you have like certain groups, right? Now if you want to kind of collapse this, right, whenever uh, it's it's like a classic pivot table, if you want to add a plus sign here and collapse and expand on need basis. We can kind of do that by toggling the visibility. So in, in the group, if I go to the group properties, I could just say that visibility by default hide it and just toggle it based on name, right? So if I do that and click on preview, you kind of see that you have these plus signs, right? And, and when you click on this, you kind of get the next level. So this is how you can actually now, now this is a very, probably not a very good example, but imagine that when you have a uh, particular column one and lot of subsections of column two, um, you know, that's where you can really use the power of this one. All right, so let me go ahead and show you another example. Um, let me see, let me drag and drop a group and a country region code. and sales YTD, right, to keep it very simple. So it looks like this. And what we're going to do is we're gonna control the visibility of the country region code. And I'm gonna do that by going to the group properties, going to visibility and saying hide it by default, but only show it when somebody selects some group, right? So in effect, it's going to create this hierarchical effect and if you preview this, it kind of gives you a collapsed version where you can kind of expand and you see the sales YTD also expanding accordingly, right? So this kind of gives you a expand collapse kind of a look and feel. So again, you can do a lot of things in this. These are the common things that people do. Uh, the next thing I wanted to kind of show you was um, a list, right? Uh, and I Okay. So we have configured our data source. So let me quickly show you how to create a list. And when I actually insert a list, it just kind of gives me a blank template where I can actually configure it however I want, however I want it to render, right? So the first thing I need to do is you see the square, I need to click on that and first make sure it is using a data set. So I'm just going to point it to our data set and then, um, I need to define how I want it to be grouped, right? So this is something that will be repeated for each value, this whole template. So I'm going to say that, um, you know, group it on 
maybe territory id right so let me show you how this will look like so i'll drag and drop a text box and i'll just say territory id and call this as territory id something right kind of play around with the font a little bit and let's see how this renders all right you see that the territory id is basically repeated uh, because it's it's a list and there is some space here so this is actually a whole list this is another list this is another list it's it's kind of a template that gets repeated for each value and to kind of make it more you know visually appealing let let me show you a few more controls so i'm going to go ahead and just insert a rectangle over here just to make it look nice and i can go ahead and just fill it up with any color so let me say rectangle properties and then fill it with maybe whatever gold color right and if you see the preview now you know you kind of get a look and feel about this right so it's kind of now now getting shaped up so let me go ahead and do something. Let me go ahead and maybe show you how to insert one more control, maybe a matrix control. And I want this um, to be grouped by country region code, right? All right, so I will have country region code and maybe the sales year to date just keeping it simple all right so now you have this right territory one territory two territory three it's kind of shaping up right so you can do anything right you can actually uh, maybe even insert an image um you know and, and then play around with it you know uh, you can kind of if it's for each employee you can actually put the employee image in it let me show you one more thing. Let me kind of uh, insert a chart. Maybe, what do we do? Okay, let's let's insert a bar chart, right? And um, what I want is this bar chart needs to be grouped by, let me just click this. Let's say groups. Okay, and here, what I'm going to do is let me make some space. I want the category groups as group, and maybe the values as mm, say cost, right? And let's see how this gets rendered. Um, yeah, maybe there's a bad example, but you get the whole idea, right? So because it's kind of group to one, so it's not showing any um, bars, but you get the whole idea. Actually, let me go ahead and change a little bit. Let me actually say country region code, and I want to see the sales, right? That might kind of give me some, oops, ah, come on, sales. All right, let's see if that helps. All right, you see US and California, and then there is a chart developed, right? And we can actually even, I can record a lecture just specifically for some visualization, but you can do some cool things over here like uh, vertical axis properties, and then maybe say the number should be a currency so that it displays in dollars, and so that when you preview it, it, it kind of gives you a dollar sign over here. So there's tons of stuff you can do, but this is the overall idea, right? So um, in essence, list is nothing, but it gives you a kind of template where you have complete control over how you want to render it, right? Um, I, one one simple example I can give you is lately I had developed um, a scorecard, right? And that gets customized for each employee, right? Um, so I kind of wanted to have that in a manner that it's easily in a printable format so that when I go for one-on-ones and stuff, you have this whole scorecard with seven pages in it for seven employees um, that I can just readily use, right? No parameters, nothing. I just open up this report. Um, this report has list one one particular um, you know uh, list for each employee, 
uh, that it gets dynamically generated and it gives me all the relevant information. I have it nicely arranged and stuff like that. So many applications to this, um, you can actually customize it however you want, but I just wanted to give you an overall idea of how the list works. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Um, so we'll see in the next lecture. All right, so things are getting more exciting and uh, we looked at a lot of stuff now, how to create tables, matrices, lists. Um, we looked at various techniques to use some of the controls and stuff like that. In this lecture, I wanted to show you something very cool, right? So we've been working with data a lot and we haven't talked much about visualization, how to use the graphs and what are the things that are available, right? So SSRS provides a rich set of visualization tools. Some of them are charts, graphs, and these are also available in 3D formats to add rich effects to your reports. So SSRS charts and graphs helps us to summarize the data in a visual format. It enables us to kind of represent very large data sets as aggregated information available at a glance. So SSRS also added things like spark lines and you know other stuff like maps, etc., into their visualization tool set. So in addition to the normal data, it also you know, provides us some specific visualization tools like gorgeous, um, spark lines, indicators, and one of the most exciting feature I personally like is the usage of maps. And it kind of allows an awesome representation of geographic data using maps. So let's go ahead and look at some very basic visualization techniques so that you get a hang of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just create a new report over here so that I don't mess with any of the existing ones. And I'm gonna call this as visual. All right, and, and we'll go ahead and use the same data source that we just created. Uh, oh, that was not a shared data source, so I'll have to just recreate it again and I'll do that really, very quickly. Uh, data source and then edit. All right, so we'll connect to our AdventureWorks database and so that we have some data to work with. And just to keep things very simple, I'm going to use the same um, sales territory table. All right, so we have this, we'll select all the columns and press okay, okay. All right, so we have some data to work with. Now, the way you can add something over here is right click, say insert, and then there is a list of visualization tools available here, right? So let me start with charts. And you see that there are line charts, bar charts, area charts, scatter plots, and stuff like that, right? So let's start with something simple. Let's go ahead and maybe create a normal bar graph. And let's just expand this a little bit. All right. Okay, so the first thing I need to do over here is define what goes in the x-axis, what goes in the y-axis, and then what should be shown in, in the summary, right? So let me go ahead and choose a few things. What I need over here is maybe the country region codes. And in my um, summations, I need the sales. And this should kind of give me a quick start, right? So let me go ahead and hit preview. It kind of gives you the, you know, country region code wise um, bar chart, right? Now again, this is a very little immature chart and then I'm just going to rename the heading CRC um, sales. And again, uh, one thing is, as I mentioned in the previous lectures, everything is highly customizable. So you can go ahead and right click title properties and actually you can start writing expressions for pretty much everything, right? Your color, your text, everything. So it's the same idea. Similarly, if you click on the Y axis, right click and say vertical axis properties, you can actually uh, configure a lot of things. So like for example, you can say that this should be a currency, right? And maybe I don't need any decimal places. You can, you can kind of configure the bins and so on and so forth. Let me go ahead and just give this a little bit more room so that we can expand this a little bit. Um, 
and these are all the series properties that you can configure as well. All right, so when I click preview, you see that the currency dollar sign has been added, the title has been renamed and so on and so forth, right? So the similar concept follows. You can right click and maybe add a pie chart now and show the same thing. Um, let's go ahead and do that. So let's say I wanted by groups and what I want is the sales YTD, right? So I'll say sales by groups and I want this a little bit bigger. All right, let's see if that worked. All right, so slowly you see it's it the things are forming up here. And again, you can always right click and you know, there's a couple of things you can do. You can show the data label so that it's more representative of the information. Again, um, you can highly customize all the values um, and stuff like that. All right, so you get a basic idea of how the visualization works. Um, I would strongly encourage you to, you know, try a couple of other things. The, the concept is pretty much the same if you add a gauge um, you know, you, you kind of have to, again, just define what data goes into it. And then finally, um, you know, all other things, including colors, text, font, titles, dynamic titles, all these are fully configurable. And this is, um, basically this will add a lot of richness to the story you're telling. And, and this combined with the lists and tabular data, um, formats that I showed you, uh, actually helps you to create a very appealing report, very, um, nice aggregation of the data that you are trying to show your management. So highly recommend to play around with some of these graphs. Um, and then we'll see you in the next lecture. All right. So we saw a lot of interesting things. So things are getting pretty exciting. And I want to show you a couple of more things before we kind of conclude this course. So one of the things which is really very interesting is the concept of sub reports. So a sub report is a report item that displays another report inside the body of the main report. So think of it like an iframe that you would use in web pages, right? So basically you have two reports and you embed one report inside another, right? And, and pa pass parameters accordingly. So frankly, any report can be used as a sub report. The report that is displayed as the sub report is also stored in the report server. So it's in the same folder. So you can actually treat them as just like any any simple report and link two reports. So let me kind of show you one simple example. So I'll go ahead and just um, maybe create a shared data source so that I can show you how to create one. Um, so I'll go ahead and add a new data set. And I am going to, uh, let's see. Maybe I didn't cover this in the beginning, but this actually helps if you have multiple reports. So, creating a data source, and then we'll create a common data set. And, and in, our, in our examples, the data set has always been sales territory, so I can just go ahead and use that same table. Um, all right. Okay. So this looks good, right? And I'm going to add a, a, add a report new item and I'm going to call this as uh, the parent report, right? So it becomes more simple to understand. All right, so we have a report and what I'm going to do over here is I am going to create a matrix and I'm going to use the data set that we just created. And let's see, let me go ahead and maybe add a name, right? Okay. Uh, the next thing I wanted to show you is maybe I'll create one more report and I'll call this as a sub report and we'll, we'll see how to link the parent report and the sub report. And if you, if you observe, it's just like any simple report I'm creating, right? And you know, it's, it's like I'll add a data source just like we do. And again, I can actually use the shared data set as well, but I'm, I'm not using that for one reason because, uh, I want to really, uh, add a particular parameter also over here. So I'll go ahead and just um, add a data set. And 
and I'll call this as data set two and oops let me actually use data source one and then use a query designer and I'm going to use the same sales territory table but what I'm going to do is I am just going to use a where clause in this right that's that's the only difference where country region code equal to and then the idea of this is that we're going to pass this particular parameter from the parent report into the sub report all right so this is a sub report and i'm going to use a normal table over here and i'll draw drag and drop a couple of things i'll drag and drop um the group well, let's do this let's do territory id um and the name um and the group and the sales by td right simple stuff So essentially what will happen is if I run this report and, and I actually in just type in US, it's going to show me all the US related data. But the trick over here is this value is going to be passed from the parent report, right? So I'm going to my parent report and let me actually use some other thing, right? Let me, let me use the country region code here. Country region code, right? And next what I'm going to do is I am going to um, go ahead and insert a sub report, right? So I inserted a sub report and if I right click on the sub report and see sub report properties, it's going to ask me a bunch of questions, right? So first of all, I'm going to say my sub report name is called sub report and what it needs is some parameters for it to work. And I'm going to say that it needs a country region code as a parameter and please pass the country region code from the current row, right? So every row it'll pass the country region code and then that will be actually rendered in the sub report. So let's see how that works. All right, so you see Australia and then, you know, a table got displayed. Uh, US, there were, you know, more than one rows that got displayed and, you know, so on and so forth. So you get a basic idea of how the sub reports work. Think of it and if you're a, you know, web designer, think of it like an iframe. You have, you know, one or more reports and you're just embedding a couple of reports inside one report and then having the parameters pass from one to another, right? Um, and again, this can be really, really powerful uh, because think of it this way, right? We, we, we kind of saw how to expand collapse columns in the previous lectures. So think of it this way that you expand a particular column and suddenly another report appears, right? And you can actually use this cascading effect as well. So these are all tools and techniques. I just wanted to show them. And, and as and when you need them, uh, you at least know that this exists in SSRS uh, for you to go ahead and configure it as needed. All right. So we are nearing the end of this whole course. And before I conclude, I wanted to give you some tips and tricks and then walk you through a few more concepts before we conclude this course. Okay, so I wanted to show you a few more tools that we didn't quite see them in detail in the previous lectures. So the first thing I want to talk about is graphs, right? Um, and especially the map component in visualization. So what I have done here is I've just opened the report that I created in the very first lecture, the non-wizard report. And let me show you how to go ahead and create a map. So first thing is I'm going to add a report and let this be a blank report and I'm going to call this as a map. All right. The next thing as we generally do is we will add a data source. And again, I'm going to just call this as a map data source. And we're going to use the same um, data database that we've been using in all the lectures. That is AdventureWorks database. All right, so in the next, I'm going to create a data set and let's see if there is any 
data set that's available. So I'll go to the query designer and let's add some tables. So one of the things is there will be certain tables which will be using the spatial data types and spatial data types is nothing but a data type that is used to kind of store the geography related information, right? So if you'd like to know more about these things like the spatial data types and stuff, um, I believe I have recorded a few lectures in my previous courses, so you can have a look at them as well. All right, so I will go ahead and maybe add address. Let's see what's available in address. So I'm going to choose all the columns and click execute. All right, so we have quite a few rows here, all right? And so we have address line one, two, and this is basically the spatial uh, or the geography data type that I was talking about. And it kind of stores this information. All right, so we have some data to work with and I'll go ahead and use this. And now if we go to your toolbox, you will find a map tool also. So I'm gonna drag and drop this. And as soon as I drag and drop that, there is basically a wizard that opens up. So there are three options available here. One is the map gallery, and by default, it basically loads, um, you know, the USA maps, right? So there are various flavors of this, or the states by county maps. So something to work with over here. And the next optional thing what you could do is, um, you know, if you would like to onboard your own shape, you can use an SRE file. Now, I would strongly recommend you to read about SRE files. It's basically, um, you know, uh, the files that basically create a custom map for you, right? And then there are plenty of resources available online. And the third is basically you can actually use a query, right? And and let's do that because we, we have configured a query. As soon as I click next, it's going to ask me the data set and Basically, it, it recognized that there is a field called spatial location and it points to these points in the overall global map, right? And what you could also do is um, click on add a Bing Maps layer and it will download the Bing Maps, right? So you can actually visually see. So there's a ton of points here. And, um, you know, you could, you could actually customize this further, but I'm going to leave it a little bit simple. Okay, the next is basically it's asking about visualization, whether you need a bubble map or, you know, basic marker map. We can just leave it as it is, right? And then click next. And this is how it's going to look, right? So the markers can be circles, it can be rectangles, it can be push pins, right? So all these push pins basically, um, you know, kind of um, show you the spatial location data that we had just seen. All right. So again, um, now we have a lot of points over here, right? So imagine that you have a map and you can kind of embed layers over it. You can kind of, one, one example would be to show population and then color code it. So max population with red and the minimum population with green. So there's tons of things you can do. So I just wanted to show you an overall um, idea of this. And if I display labels, it's just going to look very crowded, right? Because there is like 10,000 plus points over there. All right, so uh, next I click finish and it kind of generates this map for me. So good looking map. And then of course I can remove unwanted stuff if I don't need them. And if I kind of click preview, it's going to display that map for me. So pretty interesting stuff. Right, so just, just take care that the first time when you actually run this, this might take some time. So don't be puzzled. Of course, you can kind of, um, you know, modify these things, write expression, um, something like this. So yeah, a lot of things you can do. You can keep adding more layers over here. Uh, you can keep adding more data points or you can just show the US map and a lot of things can be done. So I just wanted to get you a basic idea of this one. The next thing uh, which we didn't go in too much detail is basically deployment, right? 
So if you look at your solution explorer and then right click on the overall solution, you see that there is a target server URL. Um, and, and you might just find that your URL says something like this, localhost report server. Since I have an instance, um, you know, I'm just, uh, we need to append the word uh, underscore instance name. So that's precisely what I have done. So what this is saying is when I deploy a report so that, um, you know, I can pass on the report links to other people within the organization or outside the organization, this is the server that they need to access, right? So now this is localhost means it's going to just deploy on my laptop. But then again, if you have a reporting services installed on some other machine, all you have to do is just replace this by the machine name and hit deploy. And then, you know, it goes into that machine. All right, so let me quickly show you. If you right click on map and say deploy, it's actually, it says one succeeded. So let me go to the report server and then show you how this looks like. All right, so I have hit localhost slash reports underscore SQL 2016, and this is how the UI looks like. Now, one thing is probably a deployment failed and hence you don't find any report here. So I'm going to redo that once more. Uh, let me go ahead and click on deploy. And let's see, hopefully, yeah, this should have succeeded. Let's go ahead and have a look. If I click refresh, all right, so our report did appear here and I'm going to show you about, you know, just clicking on that report. All right, the report rendered and this is how it looks. Again, I haven't configured it too much and hence you're seeing it this way. So let me go ahead and show you something else. Let me actually um, try to deploy the other report that we just created. So this is the report and then when I click preview, it basically just is a, it's a, it's, this is the report that we created in the very first or initial lectures, right? Now I think um, let's go ahead and deploy this and hopefully it'll give me an error. Yeah, it failed. And that's because it has a shared data source. So in such cases, you need to first deploy the shared data source and then the report. So I'm gonna right click on this and then just say deploy and it should hopefully deploy it, successful. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this and then click deploy. All right, it's successful. So I will go ahead and refresh this portal. And now you see there are two folders, one for the data source, which we just um, deployed. So if you right click on that, if you actually um, click on that, you will actually see all the configurations that we have provided. Um, and then we can definitely open our report as well and the report will display. So this is how you would basically deploy uh, reports. Now, now this whole user interface, I have been, I'm not going too much in detail. It's just like your Windows Explorer where, you know, you could create folders, you could set up security, um, you know, share your folder and stuff like that. So it's, it's kind of pretty intuitive. Um, you know, if you just try playing around a little bit, it's, it's no different from any Windows Explorer. All right, so I think we have covered a lot of concepts in this whole course. And this course also marks the completion of the BI set of tools. Um, one other thing that I wanted to let you know is that SSAS or SQL Server Analysis Services is also considered a part of the BI set of tools. But I purposely didn't cover that because it's it's kind of a little different and considering the newer tools that are available like Tableau and stuff like that, which kind of creates a proxy of a cube, um, you know, uh, it, it might not be that helpful to spend too much of time um, creating a course for that. But if you feel that um, you strongly are using that, you know, um, put a comment and I'll try to record a course on that as well. So if we look at the BI set of tools, what we did was that we had a course which just talked about basic introduction, basic querying. We started with what is database, what are tables. We looked at some of the basic queries and stuff like that. Then we moved on to, um, you know, some advanced concepts as well, right? We talked about stored procedures, 
uh, we talked about triggers and and stuff like that so that was that was pre that was a little bit um, as the next 201 kind of a course as compared to the previous one we also talked about what what's out there right um, so if you were not querying and if you wanted to learn more about databases what's out there so naturally some of the dba concepts are involved like tuning a database tuning a query indexing and so on and so forth i don't have a course on that but um, again leave me a comment if you want me to record something and i'm happy to do so then we moved on how to transfer data between different systems so i did record a course on sql server integration services right which basically walked you through uh, some basics on how to extract transform and load data between different systems and then finally we stepped into reporting right and this course was mainly focused around ssrs or sql server reporting services so this concludes the overall set of tools that i wanted to cover i'm hoping that you guys all enjoyed the courses um, definitely feel free to connect with me through udemy or through my website and uh, feel free to ask questions that you may have regarding um, analytics databases reporting etc and i also had a lot of fun recording this course so please keep in touch and all the very best